I went to work in the IDBK's new needal intensive care unit or NICU over 25 years ago because I love the idea of saving lives with technology, the fast pace, the adrenaline rush. To me, good care for babies was all about technology. Now, it's certainly true that some of the babies who survived are surviving now did not survive when I first started. But the bad news is it comes with many medical procedures. Now, as a clinician scientist, I want to find ways to decrease the pain and stress associated with this technology. So why pain? Well, let's meet Jack, a typical baby that we care for in the NICU. Jack was born four months early, weighed just over one and a half pounds, and spent 118 days in the neonatal intensive care unit. There, he endured over 1,100 procedures like heel pokes and needles and IV insertions. Now, it may come as a shock to you, but just 30 years ago, it was widely believed that babies didn't feel or remember pain. In fact, we actually performed surgery without pain medication simply giving them medications to keep them from moving. Hard to believe. Well, today we know that babies not only feel and remember pain, but we know that untreated pain can lead to changes in how they perceive later pain, how they think, form relationships, and even how their brains develop. Sadly, studies tell us that less than half of babies in Canada and the world receive pain relief for these procedures. Solutions aren't easy. Drugs aren't the answers. Many drugs that work for adults don't work for babies. We had to find new ways. We had become so reliant in high-tech care and specialized drugs, we were underutilizing our most important resource, parents. So you may ask yourself, what's so innovative about a parent's touch? I can tell you that in the NICU, it's truly a new direction in which we've always provided care. Remember Jack? He also endured over 2,000 hours of maternal separation. So how could parents help? Together with my team and the support of a world leader in pain, Dr. Celeste Johnson, we conducted several studies examining simple parent-led strategies, like the upright holding of a diaper-clad baby on his mother's bare chest, to see if we can make a difference. This is called skin-to-skin -skin care or kangaroo care. And through our research, we found incredible things. This not only decreased the pain that babies felt when provided during minor procedures, but it stabilized their heart rates, lowered their oxygen, uh, improved their oxygen levels, and even helped them recover faster. We did studies looking at dads, other adults like grandmothers and aunts, and even examined whether a baby's preterm twin could help decrease the stress associated with these procedures. We determined it was more than just a mother's touch. Human contact was the answer. The best part was it helped parents too. Parents told us they felt better, more in control, more confident, less stressed. We're excited to actually be now examining the longer term benefits of skin to skin contact but we also wanted to find ways to tell other clinicians and researchers about what we and others had found. So we created a synthesis of all the science that had been done in the world about skin-to-skin -skin contact and pain. We included 19 clinical trials, a third actually done here at the IWK, all reaffirming the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact and human touch. But we wanted to tell parents too. Most didn't realize how powerful they could be. So we created a two-minute parent-friendly YouTube video called The Power of Parents Touch. It's been viewed now over 140,000 times in 120 countries and it's been translated in six languages. We now know that parent-led strategies are safe, free, natural. They can be done anywhere, at home or in hospital. What we needed to do was actually be able to tell others and create a new culture of change. The IWK uh, hurt us, and they're leading this paradigm shift. Thanks to the IWK Foundation and others, we are now changing to single room care, an environment that will allow families to stay close to their babies versus our current open bay design. But with new spaces, 
new ways of doing things comes challenges. How would we educate and engage families in this new space? How would we support them so they didn't feel alone? We needed new solutions. And this is where I come full circle tonight because I believe balancing human contact with technology is actually the answer. I'm excited to be the new scientific director of the Shea NICU project. This is the first phase has been recently funded through ACOA, partnered with Cisco. It's due to launch in 2016. We will address learning and education needs, keep families together, and improve efficiencies in the healthcare system. The background will be a virtual and secure online library of interactive neonatal care. Parents and IWK healthcare providers will be linked together, as well as to the homes of our families, local community providers, and those who support them, no matter where they are. So what does this all mean for Jack? Remember those 1,100 pokes and 2,000 hours in maternal separation? It would mean Jack wouldn't need to do it alone. Parents would have the skills, resources, support to be able to become integral part of his care. The message that I want to leave you with tonight is touch is not just a nice thing to do. It's been scientifically proven to improve outcomes for babies like Jack. My hope for health care is that babies here and around the world get the best of both worlds, technology and parent touch. Thank you. <laughs>